Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, today we will start by solving a problem where we will look into a real rotational spectrum of carbon monoxide and estimate the bond length of carbon monoxide. So, let us look into the problem. Here is a real rotational spectrum of carbon monoxide. On the x axis, we are plotting wave number or centimeter inverse. On the y axis, we are plotting percentage transmission. So, at whichever wave number there is some absorption of light, the percentage transmission is not 100, or in other words, in these wave numbers, the percentage transmission are less or much less than 100. So, all these different lines that we get are the wave numbers where light has been absorbed. So, this is the rotational spectrum. Now, this is just a part of the spectrum of carbon monoxide showing transitions with J double prime equals 3 to J double prime equals 9. So, we have talked about in the last lecture that for any transition, the transition happens from J double prime to j prime. So, the peaks that we see here or the lines that we see here, the first line is from for the transition from j equals 3 to 4, the second line is from 4 to 5, the third line is from 5 to 6, then 6 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 9 and the rightmost line is for the transition for j equals 9 to j equals 10. So, the difference between the leftmost line and the rightmost line is 23.148 wave numbers. So, let us try to see a rotational spectrum. The first line which is 0 to 1 line comes at 2 b, then we have 1 to 2 transition at 4 b, 2 to 3 transition at 6 b and 3 to 4 transition at 8 b. So, the leftmost line in this spectrum which is a part of the spectrum is actually the fourth line in the rotational spectrum. So, then we have lines 4 to 5 at 10 b, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 9 and 9 to 10. So, these lines come at 12 b, 14 b, 16 b, 18 b and 20 b. In other words, the separation in wave numbers between the leftmost line in the real spectrum that is being shown and the rightmost line is 20 b minus 12 b or 8 b that is 12 b. Now, according to the problem, the difference between the leftmost line and the rightmost line is 23.148 centimeter inverse. Thus, we can write 12 b equals 23.148 centimeter inverse or b equals 23.148 divided by 12 that is 1.929 centimeter inverse. So, we have found the first part of the problem we needed to find b, b is 1.929 centimeter inverse. 
The next question is what is the internuclear distance between C and O? So, we have to find R. So, we know that I that is the moment of inertia is given by mu r square or r is given by root over i by mu. Again, we know b equals h by 8 pi square i c. From here, we can write i equals h by 8 pi square b c. So, we have to find i we have to find mu, then we can find the internuclear distance between C and O. Okay. So, let us try to find mu first. So, mu is given by m carbon times m oxygen divided by m carbon plus m oxygen. So, that is 12 times 16 divided by 12 plus 16 grams per mole. So, that is 12 times 16 times 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 28 kilograms per mole. That is 12 times 16 times 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 28 times the Avogadro number that is 6.022 times 10 to the power 23 kilogram and this is 11.39 times 10 to the power minus 27 kilogram. So, that is the value of mu. So, now let us try to find the value of i. So, i equals h by 8 pi squared b c. So, that is 6.626 times 10 to the power minus 34 divided by 8 times 3.14 squared times b that is 1.929 times 3 times 10 to the power 10. So, if we solve this, the value of i that we get is 14.5 times 10 to the power minus 47 kilogram meter squared. So, we have to find the value of r, r equals root over i by mu that is root over 14.5 times 10 to the power minus 47 divided by 11.39 times 10 to the power minus 27. And if we do this, what we get is 1.128 times 10 to the power minus 10 meter. So, we can write this as approximately 1.13 times 10 to the power minus 10 meter or in other words 1.13 angstroms or 113 that is 113 picometer. So, now let us look into the rotational spectrum of carbon monoxide again. Apart from this distinct peaks, there are a few small peaks. Though these small peaks we can identify in the spectrum. So, these small peaks shown in the spectrum are due to the natural abundance of the 13 C isotope. That is, it is from 13 C 16 O. The larger peaks are coming from 12 C 16 O. So, if we closely look, we see that the isotopic peak moves away 
from this main peak as the value of j increases. So, now we will look into the effect of isotopic substitution on a rotational spectrum. So, when a particular atom in a molecule is replaced by its isotope, the molecule will be chemically identical with the original one and the nature of the chemical bond will remain unchanged. In other words, there is no appreciable change in the internuclear distance on isotopic substitution. However, since the reduced masses are different, there is a change in the moment of inertia because the moment of inertia is directly proportional to the reduced mass and hence there is a change in the B value of the molecule. So, let us say we have a diatomic molecule. So, the masses are represented by m 1 and m 2 and the reduced mass is mu. Let us say we make an isotopic substitution of m 1. So, we have a new diatomic molecule that is m 1 prime m 2 and let us say for this case the reduced mass is mu prime. So, the mass of the other atom as we see is m 2 and let us assume that m 1 prime is the heavier isotope and m 1 is the lighter isotope. In other words m 1 prime is greater than m 1. So, because we are representing the reduced masses by mu and mu prime, we can write mu equals m 1 m 2 divided by m 1 plus m 2. Similarly, we can write mu prime equals m 1 prime m 2 divided by m 1 prime plus m 2. So, if we take the ratio that is mu by mu prime, what we get this is m 1 m 2 by m 1 plus m 2 divided by m 1 prime m 2 divided by m 1 prime plus m 2. So, we can write this we can cancel out m 2 we can write this as m 1 times m 1 prime plus m 2 in the numerator and m 1 prime times m 1 plus m 2 in the denominator. So, now we can take m 1 prime common in the numerator we can write m 1 m 1 prime 1 plus m 2 by m 1 prime in the numerator and in the denominator we can take m 1 common. So, we can write m 1 prime m 1 then in the bracket we have 1 plus m 2 divided by m 1. So, if we cancel out m 1 m 1 prime m 1 prime m 1 from the numerator and the denominator we can write this as 1 plus m 2 by m 1 prime divided by 1 plus m 2 by m 1. So, as m 1 prime is greater than m 1, we can write that 1 by m 1 prime is less than 1 by m 1. Now, if we multiply m 2 both on the left hand side and the right hand side what we get is m 2 by m 1 prime is less than m 2 by m 1. So, what we see in the numerator we have m 2 by m 1 prime which is less than what we have 1 plus m 2 by m 1 in the denominator. So, we can say in the numerator we have a smaller 
number and in the denominator we have a larger number. In other words, this we can write this mu by mu prime is less than 1 and as b is inversely proportional to mu we can write that mu by mu prime equals b prime by b. So, as the LHS or the left hand side is less than 1, the right hand side RHS is also less than 1. Thus, b prime is less than b. So, now the question is how will this be reflected in the rotational spectrum. So, first of all we know the energy level that is nu bar j is given by b times j times j plus 1. So, when we have the heavier isotope or in other words we have b prime which is less than b. So, let us try to draw the energy levels let us say j equals 0, 1, 2, 3. So, this is for m 1, m 2. Now, if we try to draw it for the isotopically substituted molecule m 1 prime m 2, then j equals 0 remains the same, but the b factor kicks in from j equals 1. So, we have a j equals 1 level for this isotopically substituted molecule with a heavier isotope is slightly less compared to m 1 m 2 is again less for j equals 2 and even less for j equals 3. In other words, this effect is more pronounced as the value of j increases. So, we also know that 2 b is the spacing between any two consecutive line of the rotational spectrum. The spectrum of the heavier isotope will show a smaller separation between the lines. In other words, for the heavier isotope the separation is 2 b prime. So, this 2 b prime will be less than the molecule which has the lighter isotope or where the separation is 2 b. In other words, if I want to draw the spectrum, let us say I draw m 1, m 2 with a solid line. So, I have this transitions rotational lines. Now, if I have m 1 prime m 2 which I am drawing let us say with a dashed line. So, this dashed lines will be somewhat come earlier compared to the solid lines and the gap between the solid line and the corresponding dashed line will increase as the value of j increases. So, now let us look again at the experimental spectrum. We see as the value of j increases, the gap between the isotopically substituted line and the other line that is between C 13 and C 12 increases from what we had at lower j values. So, we can now explain the isotope effect from the experimental spectrum of carbon monoxide. So, we can find that b and b prime from the experimental spectrum. So, which will also provide us with this ratio b prime by b or we can also find b by b prime. In other words, because b prime by b equals mu by mu prime we can get or we can obtain the atomic mass of the isotope 
directly from the rotational spectrum. We will have a better idea when we see a problem related to this. Moreover, we can also find the natural abundance of a certain isotope by comparing the intensities of the peaks at a particular J level, because we know that intensity is proportional to concentration. So, let us consider one of these peaks, let us say we consider this peak. So, the intensity of this peak is proportional to the concentration of the 12 C 16 O. On the other hand, the intensity of this peak that is proportional to the concentration of 13 C 16 O, because both the peaks are proportional to the respective concentrations. If we take the intensity coming from the 12 C peak and the ratio of this intensity of coming from the 13 C peak to the 12 C peak and multiply it with 100, what we get? We get is the percentage of natural abundance of 13 C. So, let us now look into a few problems related to isotopic effect. So, the first question we have is the spacing between the rotational lines of H f is 40 wave numbers. And the question is what is the approximate spacing between the rotational lines of d f in centimeter inverse. So, h f we can write h the atomic weight 1, fluorine atomic weight 19 and d f. So, d is an isotope of h because I can write d f as h with atomic weight 2, 19 f. So, the question is for h f I have a rotational spectrum and the spacing between the lines that is 2 b for h f equals 40 wave numbers. So, b for h f is 40 by 2 that is 20 wave numbers. So, what we need to find? We need to find the 2 b prime because deuterium is the heavier isotope we are defining b prime for deuterium and we have to find the approximate spacing between the lines. So, we have to find the 2 b prime. So, we have to find this. So, let us see how we can do this. So, we know that b prime by b equals mu by mu prime. So, we can write mu that is for h f that is 1 times 19 divided by 20 and we can write 10 to the power minus 3 divided by Avogadro number that is in kg. So, mu for d f is 2 times 19 divided by 21 that is 2 plus 19 times 10 to the power minus 3 divided by Avogadro number in kg. So, we can write that mu by mu prime equals 19 divided by 20 times 21 by 38. So, approximately if we cancel out 20 and 21, what we get is mu by mu prime equals 1 by 2. In other words, mu by mu prime equals b prime by b or b prime equals 1 by 2 times b. 
So, we found out B equals 20 wave numbers. So, that is half times 20 that is 10 wave numbers. So, B prime which is for D f is 10 wave numbers. In other words, 2 B prime is 2 times 10 wave numbers that is 20 wave numbers. So, our answer in this multiple choice question is B or the approximate spacing between the rotational lines of D f in centimeter inverse is 20. So, now let us look into the next problem. So, from the spectrum of carbon monoxide, the first rotational absorption of 12 C 16 O was found at 3.84235 wave numbers. So, the first rotational absorption comes at 2 B. So, we can write 2 B equals 3.84235 wave numbers. In other words, what we can write is that B equals 1.92118 wave numbers. The next part of the question is, while that for another isotope of carbon, the isotope the atomic weight is not given. So, this let us say is y. So, y carbon 16 oxygen was at 3.67337 wave numbers. So, first of all we should remember we are talking about two isotopes of carbon and because the value of B for 12 C is greater obviously, from our understanding now we know that y should be greater than 12. That means, we can say that y is a heavier isotope compared to 12. So, let us write that as B prime. So, we can write that uh, 2 B prime equals 3.67337 wave numbers. In other words, B prime equals 1.83669 wave numbers. So, in the question we have to find the atomic mass of the carbon isotope or we have to find what is the value of y. So, we can immediately write B by B prime equals 1.92118 divided by 1.83669 that is 1.046. So, we know that B by B prime equals mu prime by mu. So, mu prime by mu equals 1.046. So, we can write mu prime equals. So, this is the y C 16 O case. So, y times 16 by y plus 16 times 10 to the power minus 3 divided by Avogadro number kilogram. We can write mu equals 12 times 16 divided by 12 plus 16 times 10 to the power minus 3 divided by Avogadro number kilogram. In other words, mu prime by mu equals 16 y divided by 16 plus y times 28 divided by 12 times 16. So, we can cancel out 16. We can write this equals 28 y divided by 12 times 16 plus y. So, this expression equals 1.046. So, we can write 28 y by 
12 times 16 plus y equals 1.046. So, if you simplify that, we will write 28y equals 1.046 times 12 times 16 plus 1.046 times 12y. So, we can write 28y minus 1.046 times 12y equals 1.046 times 12 times 16. So, in other words, we have to find y. So, y equals 1.046 times 12 times 16 divided by 28 minus 1.046 times 12. So, if you do this calculation, you will find y equals 13.0005. So, we can write approximately y is 13. So, we are talking about the 13 C isotope. So, from this we can find that the atomic weight of 13 C is 13.0005 from an experimental data. So, this is within 0.02 percent of the best value obtained in other ways. In other words, the decrease separation observed for isotopes allows us to evaluate precisely the atomic weights of the isotope.